previously on Green Aqua. Yes, I've got permission from Tommy. The best day of 2020. Guys, if you haven't seen one of the latest video with Tommy, he made a huge mistake and uh, there's no room for failures at Green Aqua. So we decided to, to fire him. What? You, you decided what? Come on, man. Uh, one mistake. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm thinking about to set up this aquarium today, so. I'm done. Leave me alone. We need to work in the sun isolation in this room. I thought this is completely closed, so. All right, guys, enough about the drama. Well, speaking about the drama, I will be your host today. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. I think I haven't landed anything in the past two years or so. So it will be exciting. I'm a, I have a bit of a rust on me. Let's see what we will came up. Hopefully a more relaxed and silent video with a good result at the end. It's not a beginner type of scape, but you still probably can learn other things as we were working that. If you're interested about the basics in general, you can watch, uh, we have some videos. George Farmer has a new book about aquascaping. So if you're interested about that, check out George's uh, website. So today we will work on the 60P aquarium. I spent a little time in the hardscape dojo. I came up to a pieces like this. I used some Redmore woods here. I used gluing with a cigarette filter. The original plan was that to use the full height of the aquarium. It gives a better impression if you're building the whole area for the hardscape. Once you put the liquid glue into the cigarette filter and soak it well, the cigarette filter will give a smoke. So that's kind of like a signal that the bond is working. I don't want to risk that the wood will float at the end. Let's make it perfect way this time. I find three moss which we can use in this aquarium. Riccardi is a very small moss, so kind of like a perfect option for delicate pieces like this driftwood. Fissidens Mini. It's coming from Grow Cap. The third type of moss is uh, weeping. We could use uh, Christmas moss, we could use spiky for the same effect. This moss is growing very fast. It's easily become a very dense spot in the aquarium, which is kind of like messing up the layout. So what I try to do now is uh, just taking this moss pieces and just trim it to a smaller chunks. I will do the surface of the decoration and will put these small bits to the wood. Don't worry about trimming these mosses. They basically just uh, rebuild themselves from super small portions. If you're checking our channel, we have a beautiful 650 liter aquarium, like a moss crab. We use this kind of technique there. If I cover the whole thing, this will be just a moss kind of like chunk and you don't see any details. Oh, oh, oh no. oh! We're getting a lot of critics about the, the gloves. Of course, we wouldn't like to use too much of it, but uh, sometimes it's needed. Usually the moss after this process is recovering in two weeks. I will use the larger bulbitis on the crown of the tree. I'm going for the Excel version of the bulbitis from Tropica. Bulbitis tend to just uh, crawling on the branches with the root system. I kind of like the effect. What do you guys think? It's good? Good. Mm -hmm. 
this is a slow grower uh, type of plant so it need like a few weeks at the very beginning to completely adapt to the aquarium. In that uh, period of the time you probably will see some algae here and there if you are not uh, up to the task with the filtration and CO2 and then of course the algae eaters. So just to be prepared, this plant needs a bit more patience, but it's okay. So it's, uh, you, can, you can leave it to grow for a few weeks. It starts harder, but after that it will be beautiful and probably will double or triple in size. So you need to remove a lot from the aquarium. Just prepare for that. This is how the potted version, one single piece of plant looks like when you order it. If you're building a small aquarium, it's great. You have more control over on the layout. When you're building a layout, building a large aquarium, make sure to check out the Excel version of the plants. Sometimes it's much more uh, useful for your layout and you pay less money for, the, for a better effect. If you're doing this at home, you probably can use like one third of the plants, even less. You need to wait till the plants really spread out, develop. But uh, sometimes when you're not planting enough plant mass to the aquarium and you have rich soils like these aqua soils and others, some problems can came up. For example, you're disturbing the substrate. So for this reason, it's easier to just plant densely as much as you can and the plant will help you to fight against the algae as well. We're receiving sometimes a feedback from, uh, from our clients that uh, the plant is not good, the agar itself is just in liquid form and it's damaged the plants. No, it's not. This is a new type of growing media. Some of the plants is growing in a hard agar gel some growing in a liquid medium, especially some delicate plants like Hygrophila is doing better in the liquid one. Grip the plants at the very bottom and remove the wool. So now you see you need to clean just a very small bits, very small leftovers. It works for most of the plants. We'll use the ADA Aquasol Amazonia version 2 uh, for the layout. The version 2 soil is smaller in grain size, so we don't need to use now powder for this layout. This is a 9 liter bag. It's probably will be enough. I decided to not use substrate under the aqua soil because the whole thing will be probably thinner. We don't want to have algae because of that. And we're also not using too many plants planted to the soil itself. These aqua soils don't need pre-wash. You can use the soil directly in your aquarium. Pre-washed sand is, is, it doesn't look so sexy. <laughs> Planting in a dry soil is not really optimal, very hard actually. So just giving some extra moisture to the soil. Juncus will spread nicely all over the background. And because of the branches, we probably can control it. So it's not leaving that area where I'm planting right now. Hygrophila araguaya. I think I will put this behind a tree. This plant, the uh, tenelum, will be like four centimeter, five centimeter. 
so the top of the plant will be a bit taller than the, the decoration itself. I almost complete with the planting. Just to summarize what I did, we have uh, Borbitis heudeloti on the tree branches. We have Cryptoparva, which uh, works well in the shadier areas. We have some Staurogyne repens also on the bottom of the uh, tree. For the back, I almost just planted grass in different sizes. So I have uh, Yuncus repens, which is a lighter green plant on the corner. We have some Tenellum green on this side. Alocaris acicularis mini or Alocaris pusilla on this side. Okay, I still have a few plants like this Gratiola. Maybe it will be a good hello effect behind the tree. I'm putting in some uh, Hydrocotyl uh, Verticillata here and there. There was a question from the team that what we will do with these spots where the glue is still visible. Uh, we can use some bits of Bucephalandra. We have uh, a bit more Hygrophila pinatifida. If you keep it low, it's a perfect fit for this foresty kind of layout because it has a special leaf shape. So I find the perfect spot for this. We finished the planting. The layout is uh, complete now. I think the main challenge will be here, the bulbitis, which will grow like mad. So guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done it yet. Uh, you can join to our membership program to support the uh, video production and see you next week. Bye bye. Next week on Green Aqua. We either gonna shoot the epic fail in aquascaping part two or the revenge of the fallen. Ah. Oh.